Testing, testing. Uh, my name is James, and I'm going to be showing you some behind the scenes from my latest animated scene uh, from the Space Explorers universe. All right. And if you haven't seen this already, I'll put a link in the description. But basically, as an illustrator interested in animation, I just wanted to dive in and learn a little bit about 2D cell stuff, a little bit about 3D, and you know, a lot of it was figuring out Blender, and yeah, basically trying to take a vision from an illustration and kind of realize it into a, a moment in time. It's, it's not really a satisfying story, it's just kind of like, oh, people get out of a car and go through a door, but the idea is just this kind of very cohesive window into this world. This was the illustration that I did before I started any build out of the set. Um, just getting my composition figured out. Basically all the action is happening right in the middle. And then you've got this kind of moonlight coming in from the top right, which creates all these huge shadows, but also casts this line on the buildings on the left, which kind of draws your eye directly back into that center action zone. And then here's how it looks in Blender. Um, I'm definitely, I was very skeptical of 3D in general, like, so it was really important for me when I was doing this to try to match the color and the flatness of the illustration as much as I could. And in practice, that meant not using any light sources and using emission shaders instead. In Procreate, where I was doing this, I've got, um, you know, I'm looking at the style frame and saying, okay, this is how the shadow is cast on this back face, and then this is where the shadows would come in. I want this little graffiti over here and this little, little poster thing right there. And then this little chunk was, um, shadow being cast by the stairs, but the stairs are a different, different object, so that's not in here, but the shadow is. So, you go back to layout, it's all just lining up super nice, it kind of looks like the illusion of, of being lit from that consistent angle. So then let me show you the shader, that's also super simple. This is just a texture input. It's saying, you know, this JPEG entrance update for is going to be the color for this emission shader, which is going to be the output of the material. And that's it. This was a great way to make the whole scene very light in terms of the geometry, because that's not really what I'm good at, but I could really have fun with the textures. Um, you know, here's the early version of this wall with the utility box on it. Um, another huge advantage of working like this was that I could just come back and upgrade the texture just to add some more interest to it, um, which really was great for um, being impatient to you know get in there and get started but then to continue iterating as I thought of new ideas and then here's the shader for the metallic surfaces again super straightforward there's no lights going on but by cranking up the metallic you get this kind of like 100% reflection of everything around it. And so that was the same material for the puddles and the windows. Same idea. Another reason to keep the background super flat is that I knew that I was going to be doing these characters 2D, so they were also going to be this kind of flat color. Because there was so little camera movement in the scene, I could just throw in some transparent planes with the cell animation to 
um, kind of place them in 3D space without having them be 3D. So here's the here's all the planes I have going on. Let's see if we can these little bits of trash I just made on their own in their own um, you know animation file and brought them in as a plane and then they kind of run their course until they go off camera like this little can here as soon as the car gets close to it, it starts to wobble tip over as the car stops and opens up that's when you have our characters step out into this plane So each one of these frames has a shader like this that says here is normally where you'd be inputting an image you can just import an image sequence and same thing as an emission but then you're mixing it with the transparent BSDF and the factor for this mix is going to be the alpha coming from the PNG so that's what gives it its transparent background. Uh, without that you've got just a black, solid black background but it's all about mixing it with that transparent and making the alpha the factor that makes it this kind of uh, cell. I guess it's, yeah, it's pretty close to the celluloid. This is nice because I know that grease pencil is kind of closing in on this territory but for me I wanted to be able to do all of the 2D stuff on the iPad in Rough Animator just to kind of free myself from the desktop so all of my 2D files look like this let's see you know so you just there's these transparent background PNGs that I lined up with the um, you know, screenshot from the camera angle once I made the sets and then I could just kind of trace over that to know where the feet were landing on the staircase where the shadows should be um, so that when I brought them in everything lined up pretty nicely and then the last thing I wanted to talk about was 3D animation um, I'm just barely scratching the surface with my knowledge of this but the one thing that really changed the game for me um, as I was you know I'm used to the lower frame rate of trying to draw things by hand and I was running this problem where the car just looked way too smooth um, it kind of like broke the continuity of the hand-drawn stuff so I ended up finding this steps modifier it's like a step interpolation um, that basically takes the curve of the 3D animation and just only refreshes the position um, in this case every other frame so like for example on the Z location as it comes in for a landing there I actually have it up to a every four frames I think and so it, it just has this very kind of like clunky landing that that feels good the other trick that I found really useful was the noise modifier. It creates a, a randomized jitter around your animation so that things kind of keep keep moving a little bit. Um, so it just gave it just kind of kept things always moving, always rotating just a little bit. And I did the same thing with the camera just to give it that kind of like the feeling that it was being controlled by something a little less precise. Okay, that's all I've got for now. Um, if you have any questions about something specific, I'd love to answer it in a way that would save you some time. Um, and if you see some glaring inefficiencies of mine, I would love to hear more about that too. Thank you for watching.